so welcome back and uh, uh, last class we were seeing the different types of accuracy we have already discussed what is a point accuracy and the next one was accuracy as percentage of scale range suppose if you we'll take an example and see see suppose we take a thermometer whose range is from 0 degree to 500 degree celsius and the accuracy is defined as plus or minus 0.5 percent of scale range that means at 500 degree celsius the accuracy is plus or minus 0.5 percentage that means plus or minus 0.5 percentage of 500 degree celsius that means the accuracy is only is point plus or minus 0.5 percentage that is which is negligibly small the error the, the error is only plus or minus 0.5 degree uh, uh, percentage but see when the reading reduces suppose we are measuring a temperature of 25 degree celsius then we can see that then we can see that the percentage the error is only the error is 10 percentage the error is 10 percentage so when the reading is very very high then the error is very small but when the reading comes down then the error is very uh, large so this is highly misleading so we never use or we never specify accuracy as percentage of scale range rather we specify accuracy as the percentage of true value if you do that then as the reading reduces the true value also reduces or the measured value also reduces so what happens uh, as the true value reduces when the reading reduces true value also is obviously reducing the the, the percentage error also will be reducing that is uh, plus or minus 5.5 percentage of 25 uh, degree celsius it's a very small quantity rather than rather than 10 percentage so this is actually a method and this is a common scenario how we specify error or we specify accuracy in terms of error if the percentage error is very very small then the meaning is that the accuracy is also very high so this is a common way of representing accuracy uh, that is as percentage of true value in lab class also uh, while we draw the calibration curve this is how we calculate the accuracy or percentage error okay next one what we have to learn is precision what is precision that is precision is actually uh, it's more or less a measure of reproducibility that is given a fixed value of quantity when we make trisomy trials the measure of degree of agreement within a group of measurements that is we have we make the input quantity constant we make so so many trials so what is the agreement within a group of measurement that is that clearly defines the precision okay so uh, one one thing is that how it is different different from is is accuracy and precision the same see suppose we'll take two scenarios suppose we take an ammeter which can measure uh, which has a range from 0 to 100 degrees celsius suppose we are measuring 1 by 100th of an ampere suppose we are measuring 1 by 100th of an ampere and every time we take such a reading we we get the precise same reading as before we are getting the same reading as before that means our precision is correct what is precision agreement within a group of measurement we are taking 1 by 100th of an ampere and we take so many trials and we exactly get the same reading every time when we do the experiment so that means precision is perfect but suppose if the meter is having a zero drift suppose the meter is having a zero drift that means every time even though we are getting a precise reading but every time we are getting an error a constant quantity is being added to the reading that means accuracy is poor but precision is correct so the meaning is that a highly precise instrument instrument need not be an accurate instrument a highly precise instrument may not or need not be an accurate instrument next another example is that suppose we take suppose we take five readings it's a voltmeter we take actually the true value is 100 volts suppose we take this much reading 104 this much readings from these values it is seen that the instrument cannot be dependent on, on for an accuracy why and what is the maximum error that is uh, 105 minus 100 that is 5 5 by true value is 100 that is 5 percent is the accuracy so 5 percent accuracy is, is uh, 5 percent error is not that um, negligibly small while we measure a 100 volt so so but what is what about precision precision means we take the average value of these readings so average value is 104 
from the average value of 104 what is the maximum deviation maximum deviation is only 105 that is 1 volt is the maximum deviation so 1 volt divided by the true value is only what uh, one percentage only one percentage uh, uh, deviation is there that means precision is one percentage but error is five percentage so a highly precise instrument need not be a highly accurate instrument so these are the two examples which denote that precision and accuracy is entirely two different things okay now next one is the importance of linearity what is linearity many a times this term will creep in when we when we learn uh, control systems and all those things see what is linearity that is we expect the output to change whenever there is a change in input the output should change correspondingly when there is a corresponding change in input that is a highly desirable requirement for any measuring instrument okay now i'll take one example we have seen potentiometers potentiometers we know it is used to measure unknown uh, unknown resist uh, sorry unknown emf so we slide a contact we slide a contact over a resistance wire okay so when we when there is a displacement when the slider makes a displacement of x then there is a corresponding changing resistance this corresponding change in resistance will change a change uh, uh, will, will make a corresponding change in emf or the emf is directly directly proportional to the displacement so the directly proportional relationship means a linear relationship so that linear relationship should be maintained if that linear relationship is not maintained or if some non-linearity creeps in then the measurement becomes non-linear that means the measurement becomes an error error one error, error prone one so linearity is another another quality which a measuring instrument should have now next one is so this is what is shown by the diagram instead linear means the graph should uh, pass through zero and that should be a straight line but you can see that this is the curved line a uh, curved line which means that there are some non-linearities so as far as possible non-linearity should be small as possible now we'll uh, go to the next one that is hysteresis hysteresis is another thing uh, <coughs> that is uh, you might have learned uh, hysteresis curve that is bs curve in your plus two classes so hysteresis is also very important here that is is simply hysteresis meaning is lag that is lagging of the output behind the input that is output is not following the input perfectly or output is having some lag output is lagging behind the input and that may may be due to so many reasons that is maybe due to the aging of the meter or so many mechanical components are there mechanical components are rather very slow to move so that can uh, produce hysteresis and then uh, then uh, it can be due to the loss of tension of the springs all those things will contribute to hysteresis so hysteresis is nothing but what the lagging of the output behind input so that is also an, another undesirable thing that a measuring a measuring instrument should uh, should not have undesirable quantity that should not have in an in electrical system or uh, an electric uh, or an electrical measurement measuring device any measuring device okay so hysteresis is another undesirable quantity then we'll uh, these are examples these are things which which shows uh, which are very common so as so hysteresis loop that is the area of the hysteresis loop should be as small as possible if it is as small as possible the errors due to hysteresis or the hysteresis losses will be very small okay then another thing is that dead time dead time is nothing but see some instruments make mainly the analog instruments will take some time to respond so e even if we apply input the output will show zero reading so it takes some time to respond to the input signals so what is that time taken to respond to the input so that is called dead time here it is almost near to two seconds this much dead time dead time is there also there is another thing called dead sound what is dead sound dead sound means what is the largest change in input required to make a corresponding change in output what is the largest change in input so that it makes a corresponding deflection in output so you here you can see that actually this is the this is the quantity this is the measure this is the true by variation of true value variation of true value but you can know we can see that until this point the measuring instrument is not at all responding and another thing is that it requires this much change this this requires around 
almost close to what uh, uh, it's not uh, 65 minus 20 we can, we can take it as 65 65 minus 20 that is 45 45 uh, units of measurement measured quantity there, is a, there should be a variation of 45 units of measured quantity so that the instrument responds so this much sudden change of input is required so that there is the, it makes a corresponding change in output so this this is known as the dead zone this much is called the dead zone this much there is no deflection in output so that is another these are two important two undesirable quantities which uh, need to be avoided in in the measuring instrument and then we have uh, a resolution what is resolution or discrimination both are uh, both are very important terms so what is the resolution that is res resolution is nothing but that is the smallest increment in input the smallest increment in input that is the quantity in b measured which can be detected with certainty by an instrument it's called is called its resolution or discrimination the smallest increment in the measured quantity which can be measured with certainty by an instrument let me take a meter scale what is the smallest uh, length that can be measured by a meter scale we know that the smallest possible length that we that can be measured by an a meter scale is one millimeter so one millimeter below which it can be you cannot measure one micrometer you cannot measure one nanometer using a meter scale so the smallest reading that can be measured using a meter scale is one millimeter so one millimeter is the discrimination or resolution so smallest increment in input which can be measured or detected by the instrument is called resolution or discrimination so a small the for the, the if you can measure very small as small input or you, or you can record very uh, small changes in input then that means the resolution of that instrument is very high okay so loading effects we will see in a later stage that is another quality another thing which we have seen it's not a quality another thing we have to see while we um, connect a, a measuring instrument to a circuit okay so that we'll see when we learn about watt meters and all and one thing i have to tell is that next stage we are moving to the theory uh, portion as well as the construction details of indicating instruments so certainly you have learned one thing in your plus two courses that is especially in physics course where where you have learned about d arsenal galvanometer i repeat d arsenal galvanometer so uh, the principle behind uh, the d arsenal galvanometer as you all know is this that is um, it is a force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field so the basis of any indicating instrument is this one that is the force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field so that is a base or the principle behind the d arsenal galvanometer certainly you have to go through that physics portion physics course that portion of d arsenal galvanometer learn the torque equation where the torque equation is uh, t is equal to n b a sine alpha and for ma getting maximum torque that should be uh, sine alpha should be 90 degrees so sine 90 degrees one so the maximum torque is n b a n b a i so uh, so n is n b a is a constant uh, i is so torque is directly proportional to current carrying capacity so that is the equation where the, you have to learn the derivation and uh, and and uh, one more thing you have to learn that is how that basic movement a d h novel galvanometer is also known as a basic movement how that is being converted how that basic movement is being converted to an ammeter and a voltmeter so these things i repeat that is principle of operation of a d h novel galvanometer construction its derivation of maximum torque and then conversion of a basic movement that is a d h novel galvanometer to a an ammeter and a voltmeter these things we have to learn and come for the next class so that we will straight away go to moving coil instruments thank you